Hello, everybody, and thank you for listening to another episode of the No Fluff MSP Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Tahir Hamed. Got my co-host here. Stephen Badorf. Welcome back. Steven As always. It's back, Orf. There it is. It's been a while since we made that I'll one, so I think it's, it's back around. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's coming back. Um, the audience might disagree. <laughs> <laughs> of the 12 people that listen to us. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you know, it's kind of cool. Some of the topics that we've been thinking through lately, it's, it's, it's surprising we haven't done them in the past. And I'm really glad that we still have content that I think will be very valuable. Like the, some of the ones that are coming up, I'm like, cool, like this is actually really good topics to cover and I'm excited about. So this one I think is just really important um, because we need to know where to put our time and attention. And so the topic today is custom content versus templates. And I think this is an important discussion because most, uh, many of the listeners are MSP Camp members or they're using some other content provider like MSP Marketing Edge or IT Rockstars or the Tech Nibble thing so, or Robin Robin. So there are a lot of really good content providers in our industry, which is a good thing um, because it's absolutely needed and we're going to go into that. But we also need to explain like when is it important for you to not only customize the content, in our case, we say all the time, you should mm -hmm. never post anything from, except social media posts, but if you're doing an infographic, direct mail, any of the things that can be rebranded, re you absolutely need to rebrand it. So when is it that we need to just customize templates, which is super helpful, and when is it that we need to create custom content? And we have, again, as we usually do, very specifics as we go through yep. this. So that's what we're gonna be covering today. Um, and I, I think it will be helpful. So I, I implore you to stick around. I know it's not the most exciting topic in the world, but I think it will kind of get your mind in the right mode of like, when can I pull and post? And when do I need to put that extra effort in, mm. into my content? So before we jump in real quick, um, as you know, because we've been shouting it at the rooftops, ScaleCon is coming up. What? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Isn't that crazy? Uh, it's coming up. October 2nd to the 4th in Las Vegas. Obviously, me, Steven, Maddie, and Genesis are going to be there. Whole and team. the whole team's going to be there. Uh, already booked the flights and hotels and everything. Andrew from the Tech Tribe is going to be there. So it's going to be awesome. Um, if you just go to scalecon24.com and look at the speakers that we've already published, it's going to be gold. It's going to be so much fun. I'm like so excited because so, almost all of my favorite members have already registered. I look at the registration every day because I'm like, you know, I keep refreshing. <laughs> and like so many of the people I know are going to be there. And I'm like, hell yeah, I cannot wait to meet them in person. Like this is just going to be as much fun as it is learning. So obviously I had to qu just kind of mention that real quick. Also want to talk about the two platinum sponsors, Total Print USA and Breach Secure Now, both of which Alltech Services uses at um, – at the MSP and absolutely love. So I personally love these people and I've reached out to them personally to sponsor. The, the sponsorships for this event has not been like, we'll take any sponsors. Almost every single sponsor we have are someone I personally reached out to because I wanted mm -hmm. them to be there. So, all right, cool. You ready to jump in, Steven? Let's do it. Let's do this. Ooh. So I wanted to start with a quick story. Um, I got my master's in healthcare administration at the University of South Florida at their College of Public Health. Absolutely loved it. Even though I don't use the degree, I learned a ton while I was there. And one of the moments, one of the things that really, um, one of the classes really struck out was actually an IT class. Um, he was the chief information officer of the college. And it really, it was just so eye-opening on how he thought about a lot of things, but the class that really stood out, the one I want to talk about is the buy versus build class. And he proposed like, this is the challenge. We need to either get mobile health clinics or, you know, we kind of pitched him on a, on a healthcare idea. And then he would basically teach us like, okay, are you going to buy the thing and then adapt for your business? Or are you going to build in house? And it was the first time my mind really even kind of thought that way. I was like, oh yeah, I mean, I guess you don't, if you want to do a telemedicine thing or whatever, you don't have to build it all from scratch. Mm -hmm. Like you can just buy the thing and then adapt it for your organization. And it was actually kind of awesome because I ended up, <laughs> we did it. It was like a shark tank thing. It was brutal. Like they brought in like multiple of the 
professors and it was like legit they would tear our ideas to shreds which i loved because like any holes in your idea they would like in front of everybody like that's stupid like it was great you would think they would have find it and they would find exactly oh, what you had one thought about yeah so we went i pitched telemedicine so i was like look the practice you know in-house you know it's busy 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 but i think if we add in a telemedicine component it would be a really good thing to do and it would add revenue. I did all the stats. I cold called a company and pretended like I was pitching this product to the CIO. So they gave me everything. This was a legitimate sales call. Yeah. Like they literally gave me all the stats. They gave me all the tools. They like sent the proposal like it was a sales call, which it was because I was presenting to the chief information officer. <laughs> but anyway, so I, it, it ended up being a great presentation. But that was my point in saying that is like, in that situation, I went with the buy. I was going to buy the product, then we can white label it and use it for University of South Florida. That's kind of how we need to think about content. I mean, it really is. It's the buy versus build aspect of what campaigns and what content you're using. In some cases, it makes way more sense just to buy and adapt. In other cases, you're going to have to build. So I just wanted to give that quick story. I hope that was somewhat interesting. Um, to kind of frame the discussion. Uh, any thoughts on that before we get going, Stephen? Yeah, I mean, I was in that class. and I was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, I think as we go on, I'll have a lot more yeah. put into it. But um, it really is kind of a central aspect of it. It's just like the ratio of like time that you can save from buying and customizing compared to like this needs to be done. I know we have specific examples later on. Like this has to be done custom, even yeah. if it's going to take more time. Like it's not something you can replicate just by branding, white labeling, et cetera. Yep. Awesome. So the reality is it's tough to succeed with just one, whether you're doing all custom or mm -hmm. you're doing all templates, it's tough to succeed with just one. So whether it's only using templates, ready-made content, in your marketing, or whether it's only custom content, in your marketing, a mix of both is the ideal scenario. So why is it an ideal scenario? Creating effective custom content completely in-house takes a ton of time yep. like you would need at least one full-time person just focusing on content to really put out the type of content production you need to build an inbound presence that's just the reality not to mention the distribution of that content so that was one of my biggest challenges at Alltech. is i would create the campaign i'd create the content and then i'd have to distribute the content so it was like constant back and forth and then i would get leads and then i had to run the leads the whole system was in pause during that time so it's to eliminate the back and forth. So just look at companies like MSP Camp, for instance, or other content providers. We literally have 12 employees and 70% of that, like 70% of that time is just on content production. Mm -hmm. So just, I just want to put that in your mind as to realize like just how long and time it takes to create content, which is why content providers are very important, I believe. But if you're only using templates or ready built content, you won't truly get in the mindset of being a marketer. I just wanted to take a pause there because I, I think that's very true. It can turn marketing into a checklist when in reality it needs to be a mindset. So go back and listen to the Obsessed with Growth episode. I really, really encourage you, if you've not listened to the Obsessed with Growth episode, after this, please listen to that episode because we need to understand marketing is not a checklist. Marketing is a mindset. Like that whole crowd strike thing that happened recently, I, I follow a couple MSP owners. The ones that have a marketing mindset, boom, they were already on reels where they were talking mm -hmm. about it. They were already posting helpful content, not bullshit content about it. That's because they have a marketing mindset. If they just relied on, on just content providers to tell them what they need to do, then they're not going to be producing their own content. So that is why you can't just focus on templates, right? You, you have to be able to also create your custom content. So having a mix keeps your marketing moving forward all the time. If you didn't have time to film that video or come up with that new campaign, you have an inexpensive and highly effective content library you can pull from, adapt, and prospect with. All right, so since we're the No Fluff MSV Marketing Podcast, let's get into some very specifics. 
We're going to start when, when are templates ready to run campaigns and content perfect? So we're going to start there and then we're going to move into when is custom content really needed? So this is going to be completely objective. We're not trying to sell you on, on templates ready to run campaign campaigns like MSP camp. In fact, it's almost like an anti-sale because we don't want you to just lean on us. We're a hundred dollar membership. You can't just rely on us, but we are absolutely going to help augment the things you're doing. All right, let's get into it. First one, direct mail. If you are sending direct mail out, and this is something you consistently do, it would be kind of crazy to just do custom direct mail pieces because that same thing that worked in one market can absolutely work in your market. So instead of trying to build it yourself, look at the campaigns that are working for other people when it comes to direct mail. Like I talk about the gift card one all the time that we have on MSP camp that got all tech two leads from that. That is like, that is real social proof effectiveness of yeah, that direct mail. No piece. reason you can't replicate. There is so. no reason you can't replicate that. And there's really no reason to do custom content on direct mail unless you have an anniversary or you have a specific event, something that you're doing in house. And yeah, but even then just adapt a piece at one of these content providers hats. Yeah. Especially because you want to plan them out like months in advance to so, like have the next three loaded up. So for that one, like it's rather than it'd be like, oh, I'm creating custom direct mail pieces. You got to make the next three. And that's going to take up a lot of time that you could have spent on something else. So totally. Yeah, and the obviously. amount of time we put in like the bingo card, like some of these direct mail pieces we've created are just incredible. So like trying to replicate that's going to be very tough. And again, we have a content team of 12, like good luck, right? Like it's better to just adapt and go. All right, cool. Number two, presentation content. Like certain sales sheets take a long time to make effective and nice makes way more sense to have, um, you know, way more sense to save those dozens of hours and just use the ones a mature MSP has already mastered. So I think about the service tiers document, or I think about the infographic, or I think about the presentation folder, or I think about the other services we exp we have, or I think about the all services explained, all of those things are totally available for every MSP camp member. And I'm sure other content providers have something similar. Like it'd be silly to start from scratch. Like instead just look at that and go, okay, these are the, these are the sales collateral that larger MSPs use. Like, why don't I just totally adapt this? And if you're a leader member, you can literally say, Hey, can you change these things? And we'll change it for you and send them to you. All right. Like, yeah. So a hundred percent when it comes to presentation stuff, like just use the ones that are already well thought out. We've literally spent dozens and dozens of hours on these things. Just adapt them and go. Like, don't spend a bunch of hours trying to perfect that when you could just spend a couple hours and improving it. All right, cool. Yeah, and I would say the marketing mindset really ties into that as well in the sense of like, you can pull from any of them and they'll be effective. But if you were the marketing mindset, you're also creating custom content. You're going to know intuitively which ones to pull for a sales meeting that's coming up. And when you're doing that, I mean, it's just going to enhance the sales meeting overall. But that's because, you know, OK, I need the M365 infographic on the benefits you have from it because my mm. client's been talking to me about it mm. when originally that might have kind of gone past you if you're not thinking totally. in that mindset. And once the switch flips, it flips. And that's kind of yes. how you're always thinking about it. That's that mindset. Exactly. Using custom versus custom versus um, ready run when you need it. That's the episode. <laughs> yes, exactly. So moving on. Um, we've got three more on when customs are absolutely perfect. And then we're going to move to when, or sh sorry, when templates ready run are perfect. And then we're going to move to custom social media content. It is almost impossible. Trust me. I've run social media for MSPs for a long time yeah, at all tech. And then, you know, as we branched out, it's almost impossible to come up with something every day on social media that is engaging yep, by without yourself. scrambling. It's, yeah. it's difficult for us. Yep. <laughs> and we're a content company. So definitely create your own social content for sure but absolutely supplement this with ready to run awesome content. Like some of the things we have in there are ready to run right now for you can just download and post the same day is like insane. Like I think we do social media content better than anyone I've seen personally. And I've seen the stats been now we do social media management for a lot of members. I see how much their social media has improved because of the content we're literally just pulling off and must be camp and posting. Mm -hmm. So definitely do that. I think of Mark Dodds from UK, like, He's become a friend and I love how he does it. He does a lot of custom stuff, a lot of tech space. And then he has like, I think two or three different content providers where he'll pull kind of the best stuff that week and post out or he'll grab the eBooks and post out. Like he does such a good job 
of managing the custom first ready to run. Yeah. And that's like the ideal scenario. No issue with filling in the gaps. I mean, it's really ideal because then the custom content you're putting out isn't going to be stretched too thin where it's like, oh, I have to come up with custom things five times. Totally. And it makes the topics less effective rather than I'm posting two times a week. Everything else is filling in the gaps with high quality content also. But yes. the custom content is going to be even more beneficial because of that. And like the people that succeed the most on our social media management plan, you know, it's like 300 bucks a month, right? It's not that big of a deal. But the ones that succeed the most on their social media, we're posting five days a week from them. They're also posting one or two times a mm -hmm. week their own just to add on top of it. It's great. All right, cool. Moving on. High quality motion graphic videos as well as live action videos. So when we think about motion graphic videos, these are literally thousands of dollars each. Like the way yep. we do them, they are hand-drawn. They are fantastic. But it not may, cheap. Yeah. <laughs> but not cheap because, you know, yeah, you can get those like motion template videos that are not good. Um, like from some of these providers, was like, oh, $100 a month and you can use our motion graphic videos. And it's like you have to design it. Like you have to move it. I'm getting a little – don't worry about it. Just they're <laughs> terrible. It makes way more sense to brand an existing one than spend that much for every service offering you have. So, for instance, a lot of things are a lot of times our MSP camp members will kind of put these motion graphic videos on on their service pages, or they'll run an ad with it, or they'll send it to a prospect to talk about a specific vertical or specific service. Like, few things hit harder than a really well done motion graphic yep. video. So, yeah, like if you have an overview social media. Motion craft video you want to do, like go for it. It's worth the thousands of dollars, but to create 10 of these or whatever would be the value there on building it yourself versus using a template is not there. So and then live action videos, like live action videos are absolutely crushing on our ads. Like, I mean, either way, ads take a long time. Like it's going to be five, six, seven hundred dollars to get a lead from, you know, a Facebook ad, for instance, but it would be a lot more if you're using a boring content versus the live action videos that are ready to run. Yeah. So we've seen it work in Lakeland. We've seen it work in Texas. We've seen it work on a lot of different markets, the exact same video branded for a different MSP. So that's just an example of like, do you really want to spend an entire week and a bunch of money building a CGI thing inside of a cool video? Or do you want to just take one that's already built and brand it for you? And of course the answer should be like, I'm just going to take one that's already mm -hmm. built because it's working in other markets. All right, moving on. This is the last one of when templates ready run campaigns are perfect. Obviously, there's way more than this, but like just wanted to give you like the most valuable aspects. Uh, rapid fire, landing pages for ads, infographics, and processes in general. So don't start a landing page from scratch. You know, tailor it. Infographics, I use infographics all the time in the sales process. If a prospect was interested in whatever, and I have an infographic to send them, and my competitor does not, yeah. I stand out. Branded to your MSP too. Like exactly. It's great. So and then processes in general, like, you know, what what are the best processes? Like we have the guides on MSP camp. The only guides we put on there are things that have provided a lot of value to our MSP, like how to hold a webinar, how to hold a lunch and learn, how to do your Google My Business correctly. The like new all, website guide. Yeah, yeah the, the new guide. website guide. Like how do you do a website correctly? Like we just published that. I wish I had that guide when I was originally building the Alltech site. Yeah, it's, kind of, it's everything we've learned kind of just on the paper. And we're going to continue to add to it as time goes on. But I mean... Th yeah. That is when you absolutely don't start from scratch. Grab that guide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Before you Please. do anything in MSP marketing, grab the free guides you have access to and use someone else's process and then make it your own, right? Yep. All right, cool. Hope this has been helpful so far. We are now shifting into custom content and when it is absolutely needed. All right, anything on that before we move to custom content, Stephen? Let's move on, yeah. All right, let's do it. All right, number one, text-based posts on LinkedIn. This has to have your voice. Seriously, like what are your actual yep. <laughs> thoughts, right? Like I do a lot of text-based posts on LinkedIn. Um, obviously, you want to have a link in there somewhere like the end for them to go do something. But uh, yeah, so a lot of posts on LinkedIn for your thought leadership should come from you. That doesn't take that much time. Like I, I sit in my sauna and I'll think of like, that's when I usually think of a lot of content ideas. So just have something you do on a weekly basis. You know, Will, Will Sappy. I interviewed him. He's over at IT Voice, and he has a really good content 
uh, mindset, I think, when he's like riding his bike or something, right? So just make sure you have content time and creative time and marketing time. Yeah. Subtle sauna flex. <laughs> yeah. Sauna no. flex. <laughs> no, but like, I'm I mean, in my backyard sauna. I like to think about millions content. of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I'd be like, yeah, because the value from like those thought leader posts, like it is your perspective, even if it's not like the most, like, you know, you could pull something from a content website, like a blog, and be like, here's the information here. But like, if it's not your original thought, even if it's less like tailored than the one from the site, it's going to be more valuable. Yeah, totally. And it's funny because I've been doing that, you know, not even that much. And like people keep, people have been tagging me a lot on LinkedIn, like, hey, Tar, what are your thoughts on this? And that's kind of cool because people are starting to think of me as like, you know, the marketing, MSB marketing guy. And, you know, that's great. And you respond, it's not an AI post <laughs> about like, here is my response to what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, it would save time. No. Um, all right. Number two. I put pages on your website, but really, like, let's just take a step back here. Your whole website ideally would be custom. Mm -hmm. I think this is important. This absolutely requires a lot of time and attention and money, but in an ideal situation, it will be done in house. Like that's why these Robin Robin sites, they hurt me a lot. They hurt me so much. <laughs> I can tell immediately, immediately that it's a Robin Robin site. And I don't think I've ever in the history of talking to, at this point, hundreds of MSPs when someone has a site like that, that it's performing well. Yeah. And like prospects are going to notice too, if you're using like a templated site, especially if they're evaluating multiple providers, like they should be. I mean, totally seeing two providers with basically the same site, but the logo section switched to the top. Like yep. if I was the prospect, that would almost make me eliminate those two providers from my like discovery phase. That's the reality, and we are, I'm super excited about this. We are building like five sites currently for members, and I am just in love. Like, I am absolutely in love with these sites. They bleed personality, bleed, that's not the right word, but they, like, they just exuberate personality. Like, one of them, Tech Castle, they had a really cool theme. It was like Tech Castle, but the logo was like 90s, and the web, current website just wasn't good and i kind of pitched them I'm like i know we're doing a website for you but can we just do a rebrand for you and they were like stoked they're like absolutely i'm like you just have this cool theme with the castle like let's get you like a night mascot mm -hmm. and like let's bring in these bold greens that you have like a little accent of and like the before and after as we're working through the site i'm just like every i just keep pulling it up and looking at it and like that's the best type of websites when it's like you're proud of your work and like WNC, they're this Asheville company that their logo had these like really cool like variations of blue in the mountains. And like we're using that throughout the site. And it's like, it's just beautiful, right? And like you just cannot get that if you're using a template. You just can't. And then you get to take that same branding and that same bold strategy and rebrand MSP camp content with that same look or have us do it for you. And now, now it all, even though you're using a template for the infographic or the social media post or the direct mail, yep. it still has the same scent, the same feel as that custom website. And what do we say? What do we say, Stephen, about the website? It's about the scent? Yeah. <laughs> well, the website's kind of, I mean, that's where everything goes. Yes. Like everything leads back to your all website. All roads lead We've to the website. A lot of times. <laughs> all roads lead, if you're running a campaign, whatever it is, all roads lead to the website. So you want them to come to something beautiful. So anyway, we're going to be, we're going to be, we're going to be showing those websites soon. Um, right now we're not taking any, I know every week someone reaches out to me for us to build a website for them. I do apologize. We are ramping up the team. We just we have to be able to spend the time and attention we need to get these things awesome. So hopefully Q4, we'll be able to take on more of those. Um, but yeah, just super proud of, of those. So those need to be custom. That being said, I want to take a step back here. We may not all have the budget right away to build a beautiful custom website. And that is okay. That is okay. We just need to get the marketing started. So if that means starting with a, a template, like on Groobly, or I know Nate Freeman's got like the MSP sites where it's like, you know, you can customize one of a couple different templates. Like there are absolutely opportunities to start with a template and that is fine. 
don't overstretch your budget, especially if you're starting. Yeah. But if you're a million plus MSP, as like a lot of these listeners, and you're still using a shitty site, tighten up. <laughs> Let's tighten up. <laughs> Let's build a site that you're proud of. All right, cool. Moving on. Any thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, you know, they basically just like the problem, the main problem is like custom site if you can. If not, the problem would be getting a template site created and leaving it to sit as it was created rather than putting your own personal touch onto it mm -hmm. um, outside of just like, because like I'm saying, I mean, the biggest problem would be, yeah, you go to a validated provider, somebody's evaluating your MSP, and it's the, literally the exact same as somebody else's because you didn't make any changes. And usually the text is going to be the same thing. Yeah, just the, the same, same thing, thing, same kind of images. So um, if you are using template site, definitely like put in that personal touch get custom images created to switch out the ones on there, mm. write the text in your voice. Yes. Um, that can go a long way. Totally. All right. This one's quick and easy. MSP specific service offering sales sheets. So for instance, like all tech has like really specific things they're doing like auto voice, like they have a VoIP thing, they're white labeling, you know, that's very specific to them. They need to do their own sales sheet on that or have the idea and hire a company like MSP camp to build it for them. But that needs to be a custom thing. Mm -hmm. That is why, on the MSB camp site, there is a shop where you can buy literally anything, right? You can buy a sales sheet, you can buy all these different things, any graphic design, because we want to promote our members not to just use templates, but to customize things for them. So MSP specific service offering sales sheets is a great example of that. All right, moving on. Your MSP specific events, webinars, or offerings. Spend the time to design these effectively and make sure it's custom. Yep. Like, you know, I love that um, a current member, Renaissance IT, Jamie, they have this really good idea of doing an AI webinar um, around, you know, how to use AI effectively as well as, well as like security um, aspects to consider. And it's great. I love the landing page. I love the idea that they're going to get a lot of people there. That's a great idea that can't really come from a template company. We can throw the idea out there, but if you're not in the marketing mindset of like, okay, I'm going to build the landing page. I'm going to read, I get people to register. I'm going to prepare the content for the, what the webinar, like that's yep. a custom thing that you're just as a marketer, you're going to have to get in the yep. mindset of doing. That's why if you just rely on, on templates, you're never going to get past the checklist of marketing. Yeah. I mean, only you're going to know the topics that your users are reaching out to you about totally. specifically, <laughs> like that totally. can't be answered by us. And it might be area specific. Like I know in mm -hmm. Florida, we got hurricanes. So we do hurricane content. Like other places might have av avalanches or whatever. <laughs> or tornadoes. <laughs> the two big natural disasters. <laughs> yeah, technology tornadoes, you know, I don't know. All right, cool. So those need to absolutely be custom. All right, number five, your branding and theme. Superheroes, bold, funny, vibrant, etc. One of our first members. Hudson Sky, they've got this beautiful red and orange branding with this like yeah. sweet H. And I remember we used to rebrand so much stuff for them. And I was always just, every time I got the rebrand back, I was like, this is awesome. Just the colors alone, how it looked on a finished product, whether it was the website or the sales sheet or whatever, it was just so memorable. It just stood out over all the blues of our world. <laughs> So even something like color, right? Or I know if you haven't listened to the episode on Mike and Techie Geeks, they are absolutely crushing it because they use templates, but they also have their superhero theme. They also have a marketing staff that pushes hard on that theme. So Yeah, it's everywhere on their site. I'd yeah. recommend to take a look at that website. Techie yep. Geeks. They're awesome. Tech Castles, right? They they Obviously, we guided them a lot. And we, we rebranded for them, but they were open to the idea and they were willing to pay for a rebrand. And now their brand, holy crap, does it stand out over the MSPs in their area. So really take time on your branding and theme. And at ScaleCon, we have a whole session on this and it's going to be gold. All right, cool. The last one of custom content, as you can see, even with a, a product and service like MSP Camp, there's still a lot you're going to have to do. It makes your life much easier. And now you have more budget to do things because our service is very inexpensive. But you absolutely are going to have to be doing things for your marketing mm -hmm. to push it forward. Number six, video. 
As mentioned in the previous episode, you need more custom video of your team, your office, your advice, your thoughts on business. It doesn't just have to be IT. You can be a business leader in your community. I promise you, the world is actually not saturated with content creators. It's not. It's absolutely not. I know there's more content going out than ever. There's more posts going out than ever. But good content, there's still a huge, huge need for it. And I think there always will be. So don't think there's not enough content in the world. Russell Brunson does a podcast every single day. Oh, well. <laughs> every single day. And he recommended, you know, when you're getting started with your marketing, do something every single day. Sure, the first hundred might suck. No one might listen to it. But then after that, you're gonna, it's going to turn into money. You only need a small audience to move the needle in a big way. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I mean, we saw that firsthand. That's 100%. So here's an example of that. We only had 200 weekly listeners of MSP Camp. Thank you to our 200 weekly listeners. Seriously. <laughs> you know, now, fortunately, we have more, but we started with 201. <laughs> 200, now we have 202. Oh, okay. You know, it's two more humans. Uh, <laughs> and that got us up to $20,000 a month in recurring revenue when we started. That's a very small audience that turned into a good amount of revenue because they trusted us and they bought in mm -hmm. and they like what they got, right? So you don't need to have a massive audience to get a lot of return on it. People um, um, at Scalecom, we're going to try and have 400 people in the room. And you might hear that and say, damn, that's a lot of people, as I will in my head. Get nervous just thinking about it. <laughs> but that's that's likely to happen. But then, and they're gonna we're gonna provide value, they're gonna hear what we have to say and whatever. But when we get a post or a video that only gets four hundred views, we're not happy with that. But if you conceptualize it, that's the same as that room of four hundred people. Yep. <laughs> if 400 people are in, are looking at, engaging with your posts, whatever, that's the same exact thing as 400 people in a room listening to your, your content mm -hmm. on stage. So it doesn't take much when it comes to content creation to really move the needle and get people on board with what you're doing. All right. So just to kind of wrap up for today, you know, we've given really specific examples of when and why ready to run is absolutely necessary in your marketing, but also when and why custom content is absolutely necessary in your marketing. Oh, excuse me. Now, don't get me wrong. I think there's a lot of people that succeed with like custom content only, and there's a lot of people mm -hmm. that succeed with templates only for sure. Today was just to show you the ideal situation of when to use both. Yep. So this is why MSP camp is not the end all be all. You know, we are here to provide everything you need to seriously improve and augment what you're doing in-house, but not eliminate the need for it. And, you know, one thing that I think is really exciting that's coming to the site, I know we've talked about it in the past, but now we're, we're moving back onto phase two of the website development. Obviously, we've paid for it a long time ago, but we just wanted to give it the right attention to make sure it was done right. And there's two things that are coming that I'm very excited about. One is the scorecard. So what are your weekly, monthly, quarterly checklists, not really checklists, but um, uh, KPIs. Yep. So the marketing person will actually be putting in their their scorecard items. And there's a couple of things that the salesperson owner is going to have to do. Like what is your MRR that quarter based on, on what you're doing? How many networking events have you done? Obviously, a lot of times that's not the marketing person. So it's these ongoing like business development and growth KPIs on the website. And it's going to turn into scorecards or uh, um, leaderboards on the site. Yep, very that, necessary gap that we're filling there. Like on the site in terms of like, here's the content, but where's the accountability piece? Where's the reporting piece? Yep. And having it built on the site, yep. we're really excited about it. It's going to take a lot, but it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it is going to be awesome. And then we're going to be able to say, okay, the winners this quarter are going to get X and, you know, really gamify yep. the excitement around MSP marketing. The other thing that's coming are challenges. So this is really cool. We're going to be able to do different challenges right onto the site. So you can enroll into a challenge like, hey, we're going to run this Facebook ad for three months. This is the targeting we recommend. This is the ad we recommend. This is the budget and blah, blah, blah we recommend. If you want to run the challenge, you click start. 
gives you everything you need, including video guides, the exact content mm-hmm. to pull from. And then you have to report on that challenge. And as we get more people doing the challenges, we get more reporting on the different content, right? So we're going to have the direct mail game where it's like, Hey, these are three direct mails you use. These are the scripts you do when you call. This is generally how you get your list, et cetera. And then you run the challenge over three months. It's in addition to the scorecard, right? It's these are not, these are not random acts of marketing. It's the, these are these things we're consistently doing on the scorecard. And then now we're going to add a challenge onto that, a quarterly campaign, uh, you know, to really, um, accelerate what we're doing and report back not only for our grow groups, not only for membership, but to the MSP camp team. So we can see throughout our membership, what content is performing the best. So we could really push that uh, more to our different members. Yeah. We already have so many challenges. We're ready to get oh my started. God. Yeah. So. It's, it's, it's going to be super fun and super exciting. Cool. Last thing before we wrap up is did want to shout out our gold sponsors too for ScaleCon. Oit, VoIP, they're awesome. Feel good MSP. Obviously, you know Brian. Alternative payments. Love what they're doing. Channel channel program. So glad they're going to be there. And Monjour. So super excited about Thank ScaleCon. You. Sponsors. Seriously, these things cannot happen without sponsors. So just really appreciate them. And really appreciate the fact that we have uh, 100, almost 100 registrations now. So if you've not registered and you've been thinking about it, Please do. Um, Anything else before we wrap up, Stephen? Let's wrap up. Cool. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you on the next one. Yep. Thanks for listening or watching. (laughs) Yeah. Watching.